the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, on Sunday successfully carried out the landing experiment of the Reusable Launch Vehicle Technology Demonstration, RLVTD, program at the Aeronautical Test Range in Chalakere, Chitradurga. As Bhutan's 5th King Jigme Khesar Namgyal Vangchak arrives in Delhi on Monday afternoon at the invitation of President Draupdi Murmu, all eyes will be on his talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday, and any possible discussions on the progress in Bhutan-China border talks. This is the first such high-level meeting between the two leaders since Bhutan and China's talks on their boundary made rapid progress. In October 2021, Bhutan and China signed a Memorandum of Understanding for a three-step roadmap to expedite border resolution talks. The discussion centers on two valleys to Bhutan's north and the Doklam area to the west of Bhutan, close to the trijunction with India, which was the site of a standoff between Indian and Chinese forces in 2017. India has been particularly watchful of any possibility of a swap agreement between the two countries that could affect its security at the trijunction. The new Foreign Trade Policy, FTP, has introduced an additional consideration in providing such trade transit facilities for adjacent countries, India's strategic and economic interests. Transit of goods through India from all to countries adjacent to India shall be regulated in accordance with bilateral treaties between India and those countries and will be subject to such restrictions as may be specified by DGFT, Directorate General of Foreign Trade, in accordance with international conventions. This Mr. Kishida also unveiled Japan's new plan for a free and open Indo-Pacific FOIP and exchanged views about deepening the Japan-India Special Strategic and Global Partnership. Japan wants to reinforce the idea that it has been the main champion of the FOIP concept. The new plan for the FOIP lays stress on the need to uphold the rules-based order and respect each other's territorial sovereignty. There is a realization that Japan needs to do much more in the region and towards this, Four pillars of cooperation under the new FOIP have been outlined, principles for peace and rules for prosperity, addressing challenges in an Indo-Pacific way, multilayered connectivity, and extending efforts for security and safe use of the sea to the air. Japan wants to engage in economic development programs such as promoting the implementation of the G20 principles for quality infrastructure investment. Japan has been working for long on connectivity projects bilaterally with many countries in the Indo-Pacific region. Japan has made a new commitment of $100 million towards the Japanese CN Integration Fund. It will promote the Bay of Bengal Northeast India Industrial Value Chain concept in cooperation with India and Bangladesh and the new Palau International Airport Terminal Project. Japan will help in strengthening the capabilities of maritime law enforcement agencies in other countries. Mr. Kishida also announced that Japan would mobilize a total of more than $75 billion in public and private funds in the Indo-Pacific region by 2030 in infrastructure development. The primary goal of Mr. Kishida's visit was to reinforce the centrality of Japan in the emerging geopolitics of the Indo-Pacific. The month of March in Mumbai was relatively cooler and drier than normal. Wines in March usually tend to flow from West Asia to Mumbai, signaling the beginning of a sweltering heat and humidity build-up through May before the rains arrive in June. West Asia has been warming more rapidly than other tropical land regions. The Northern Arabian Sea has also been warming. The combination of this land and ocean warming has enhanced the duration, frequency and intensity of heat waves over India in the pre-monsoon season. Meteorologists have also blamed the Northern Arabian Sea warming for the increase in heavy rainfall events over northwest India in the monsoon season. 
rapid warming over west asia produces low sea level pressure locally which sets up a northward pressure gradient over the arabian sea from the equator to its northern waters this gradient pulls winds northward disrupting those that should actually be flowing east from west asia towards mumbai so the winds came to mumbai from the north northwest bringing cooler and drier air instead of the usual hot and humid air from the desert unseasonal rain and hail leading to devastating crop damages in the northwest only about 50% of el nano years have so far produced a drought over india we may end up with a normal monsoon but it is quite likely that warming over west asia plus the arabian sea is going to once again produce heavy rainfall events over northwest india and pakistan a classic exposition of this principle is the center's announcement providing full exemption from basic customs duty for all drugs and food imported for treatment of rare diseases listed under the national policy for rare diseases and anti cancer drug pembrolizumab While rare diseases are defined by their infrequent occurrence in the population, the sheer number of diseases estimated between 7000 to 8000 conditions, 450 of them have been reported from hospitals in India, and the number of people with some form of rare diseases in India, an estimated 100 million, make it a problem that cannot be ignored. Vice Admiral Sanjay Jasjeet Singh assumed charge as the Vice Chief of the Naval Staff (VCNS) 